Welcome back to another FPL reaction stream. We're looking here to Double Gaming 28 and recapping on how Blank Gaming 27, Blank Gaming 27, what am I even on about? Gaming 27, too many blanks and doubles coming up, but we have one game left in this game week and that's tomorrow. Sheft United versus Arsenal. So the game week isn't complete yet. I'm on a very small green arrow, but as you can see on the bench, I can't ignore it. Ariola with 13 points. He was in my team for the entire week and Gordon was a tricky one. That's one of the key reasons why I deliberated on the Son transfers for so long. I didn't want to bench Gordon. In the end, it was Tony, the only attacker so far to have blanked, but it is what it is. The defense is an absolute disaster. At least Dubravka finally kept the clean sheet. I think those that picked Dubravka of Ariola have been quite unfortunate, but not as unlucky as those that bought Sonesi this week for a hit. I think, I mean, hopefully he's back for double gaming 28, but let's just wait and see how that all pans out. I hope he does recover. I was so close to buying him for a minus four hit this week. And now I can look at alternatives like Zabani or Kirkes, who I talked about in recent streams as well. But let's get straight into your questions as always. Have a bit of a chill stream, if possible. Uh, good to see you, Sing. Damn you, KDB. Absolutely nothing the whole game. It's probably one of his worst games in a long while. Uh, I know a Man City fan and he said it's literally one of the worst games he's ever had and it's hard to disagree. De Bruyne is so consistent, but he was pretty awful today. Even the crosses, there were one or two good ones, but some of them were just woeful. So I do feel for you. I thought De Bruyne was a hold. If we got the news that he started before the deadline, I thought De Bruyne was a very easy hold for this week, then sell out of gaming 28. But yeah, I think uh, those that are parting ways will be happy to get rid. Alex says, hi, mate, have got 59, resulting in a small red arrow with Saka, Saliba and Gabriel still to play, around 175k. Feel for owners of Andy Robertson. Yes, he was sobbed off just seconds before banking in that clean sheet. Liverpool went on to win the game and Robertson also got booked. So that's a zero pointer for Robertson owners. Very unlucky. I don't think there are many Robertson owners out there, but there's probably someone watching who does have him. Let me know if you do. That is very unfortunate and I do feel for you. Beeble Checkmate says, Hey Dylan, I don't have a free hit and think of dead, en dead ending at Game Week 30 and Wildcard 31. Would you sell KDB for Bowen and Haaland for Morris minus four this game week? I also got Foden, but I trust his minutes more than KDB. Yeah, that's been the case this season. K you know, Foden has now transformed into one of the most important players for Man City. He's really stepped up this season. So yeah, I completely agree with your rationale. I would sell KDB to Bowen. Um, yeah, you're not looking at... Uh, yeah, you don't have the free anyway. Absolutely makes sense. Even Morris for a minus four for Haaland. I actually think it's worth it. Three games compared to one over the next two game weeks. I think it's a no-brainer, to be honest. I know Haaland could still do well, and the way Liverpool play will present chances for Man City, but yeah, I think the minus four here is certainly worth it. Now, in terms of strikers for game week 29, I think the optimal front three would potentially be Awani, Watkins and Tony but honestly with Morris having the double in 28 I think that makes sense I'd go for that minus four hit um, maybe wait a little bit just in case there could be injuries maybe Foden in the Champions League if he plays so yeah just wait for your transfers but I think you've got the right moves there Dylan Foden my captain 30 points fair play and um yeah, look, I went for Haaland in the end. He's been so frustrating, but Foden has really stepped up. And I kept saying to people, do not sell Foden. I know it was a popular transfer this week, Foden to Son. And while Son did something at the very end, it's just difficult to sell Foden when he's got Man United at home. He really does well against them in recent matches, particularly at the Etihad. Foden saved me in my cup tie. Good to hear, HD. Still have free Arsenal to play tomorrow too. Yeah, that's all good. If you're on a green arrow now and you've got free Arsenal, it's looking like a secured green arrow there. It's pretty much done. Zenzone says, Evening, Dylan. Got 73. The sniper be sniping. Gabriel and Saka to play. Doughty in for Trippier locked in for me after Senesi going off injured. Yeah, very unfortunate there. Wait for more updates on Senesi. It didn't look good, though. Uh, Doughty, the thing I like about him is his set-piece delivery. Arguably one of the very best in the Premier League. And Luton Town are pretty poor defensively. I don't see any clean sheets over the next three games. But what you can get is an attack in return from Doughty and potentially some bonus points like he did against Aston Villa. Evening, Dylan. Are you happy with Haaland? No, uh, don't worry. I'm not happy with Haaland. I mean, the chance he missed, it was harder to miss than to actually score. It's actually insane, but it goes to show even the best players and finishers can have their off days. And if it wasn't for Amrabat, who we have to thank, Haaland would have blanked. Shouldn't have removed the captain from Foden to Haaland. Bringing in Solanke this week was such an L move. I disagree with the Solanke 
thing because he's going to be a good option for double gimmick 28. Um, you really buy him for the good fixture this week and the double next week. So I don't think it was an L move just yet. If he blanks in both games, fair enough, but I don't think that'll be the case. Thank you very much, Venom, as always. Massively appreciate. I sold Foden. I feel for you. Look, I can understand why some people sold Foden on the wild card and also to go to Son. Long term, it pays off. There's no doubt about it. But to do it this week, I always kept saying to people, the timing does put me off. Even for De Bruyne, it didn't work out for those that held on to him. But I think it was the right move to keep hold of De Bruyne this week. Really tempted to avoid free hit 29 and take a minus 8 instead to field 8 players. Just feel the fixtures in the game aren't that amazing. That's fair. In my situation... I'd have to take a minus 12 to get to eight players. And it also would include some Luton Town players who I don't necessarily trust. So that's where my issue is. If you can get to seven, eight players, I think that's already enough. But on top of that, if you've got Tony, Watkins, Bowen, Huming Son, and maybe another Spurs midfielder, I think that's all you need to potentially get a green arrow in Blank Gimmick 29. Wei Seng says 68 points so far. That's good. I think in the Discord server you were saying, oh, my week is over or something. Uh, it's something you tend to do, but yeah, it's all good for you. Uh, Gusto and Gordon on my bench, up to 450k. Wouldn't complain so much. What do you think? Yeah, I do share your frustrations with the bench points. Um, that's always going to be a frustration, but with Gusto, to be fair, I don't think you expected him to get six points despite conceding twice. You know, that just goes to show he's a good bonus points machine when he gets those assists and he's got decent attacking potential. But I think it made sense to bench Gusto. Gordon, look, you can argue it both ways, but it made sense for a lot of people to bench him or even sell Anthony Gordon this week. Senesi was this week's Huang Hee Chan. Very unfortunate. For those that went for Huang Hee Chan and Senesi, all I can say is I feel for you. I went for Huang Hee Chan last week. The blessing in disguise for those that did that move is that you had the funds potentially to go to Hyun Ming Son so you could rectify that mistake immediately. But those that went for Douglas Louise, Bailey, Jerry Bowen, they're all doing really well. I think current Son and Haaland, just not that guy we know. Not saying they're bad, but in bad form in my opinion. Look, it's difficult because, yes, Erling Haaland's missing a lot of chances, but he scored five goals the other day. Yes, it's against Luton Town, but we're all raving about Watkins scoring a brace. Haaland scored five past them, and this is him in bad form, so to speak. He also scored against Brentford, and he also managed to get a few other goals here and there, a brace against Everton in a recent game at the Etihad. Look, we have high standards for Haaland. He set them himself. He is missing just glaring chances. That's the main frustration. I do disagree about Son because, yes, he might have been off it since the Asian Cup, but it's only two games. I think it's very harsh for people to say, yeah, Son's not the same player now because he's literally had, what, two starts and one cameo off the bench where he got an assist against Brighton for the winning goal. So I think we need to be a bit patient with Son and he will deliver in the coming game weeks. I think Aston Villa could be a great fixture for him. Ben says, hi, Dylan. Should I triple captain Solanke? Honestly, I think I would. You will have opportunities later in the season. There's going to be more double game weeks, of course, in 34. Very likely we're going to get multiple doubles. We could get Hoyland with Newcastle at home and Sheffield United at home. In gimmick 37, we could have Salah with a double. I think against Aston Villa and Fulham away, if I'm not mistaken. And also Erling Haaland would have a double potentially in gimmick 37. Same goes for Saka. He will have a double. And Chelsea as well. They will have, I think, two doubles. Palmer could be a really good option there as well and quite underrated. But I think I'd play Solanke. I'd play the triple captain on Solanke this week. Chelsea's finish says next game is crucial for Liverpool and Man City for the title. Yeah, it will be. Um, if Man City win that, I think they go on to win the league. I think it pretty much sets it. But Liverpool are just finding a way to grind results, even with all these injuries. You have to commend them, to be honest. I think there was some controversy about the goal, and I understand that, to be honest. But overall, Liverpool are doing really well considering their injuries. And Man City are inevitable, in my opinion. They're the most likely team to go on a 10-15 game winning run and secure the title. I think Arsenal have a chance, but it's much slimmer than the other two. Alan Madrid says, hi Dylan, Mr. Deadline stream. Forgot to change my last game at captain. Tony game at 27 is 72. Very good score, though considering your captain, Ivan Tony, by the way, he's been so frustrating and uh, I'm looking at either selling or benching him this week and I could just tell he's going to troll. But ultimately for gimmick 29, he will be in my team no matter what, whether I keep him or play the free hit. But he's been absolutely just awful. And actually, I think Ivan Tony has been one of the causes of so many lost points in recent weeks because my plan was to do Solanke to Darwin in double gimmick 25. That massively backfired. I really liked Tony against West Ham, so I took another hit to get Tony in. And that also meant I benched Gordon this week for Ivan Tony, who did nothing. So I think Tony has been a fawn in my side. And in recent seasons, he's actually done quite well for me. So it is what it is. 
Welcome, Beardy. Always good to see you. I do feel for you about Senesi, by the way. Very unlucky, to say the least. With Solanke yellow flag, do you think it's a mistake to bench Gordon for Solanke? I'm just not too sure. Uh, not necessarily, because uh, with the updates we got uh, from Iriola, and then later on, I think we got updates about, you know, Solanke potentially being available. Yeah, I don't think it was a mistake, really, because a lot of us expected him to start. I even said it in my stream. I think he is going to start, really, based on all this information. Um, I did recommend to people, if I'm not mistaken, to start Gordon over him, but only just. And I think the yellow flag was the key reason why I said that. Otherwise, I would have gone for Solanke all day long. Tremor Kid, good to see you, as always. Hard to sell Foden after tonight. Yes, but it's Liverpool away and a blank, and then Arsenal at home. Foden can certainly get something in those three game weeks, but his ceiling will be much lower than a human son. So if you're doing Foden to son, I wouldn't hesitate, to be honest. Uh, Foden in the form of his life, yes, and he's finally not trolling me in FPL. Uh, historically, he does. Things have changed, really. Tony was really good for me in the past. Now he's bad, and it's Foden who is really coming up clutch. 61 with three Arsenal to go, says Gary. Yeah, good stuff. Easily, you could get 70-plus points, especially if Saka does something. But if you didn't captain Saka, you're probably hoping for him to blank because any returns could result in a red arrow for you. I'm on 63 points with Saka captain Odegaard and Saliba left. Yeah, look, I'm, I don't like to be overconfident uh, when talking about Arsenal, but great chance, I think, of getting a lot of points there. Have you decided to use the free hit for 29? I'm very likely to, but as I mentioned in my chip strategy guide and recent streams and videos, it's not fully locked in. I even put a poll, which I'll show you very soon, uh, and it does indicate that I'm open to taking hits and potentially fielding eight or nine, something like that. But to be honest... The most likely scenario for my squad is to free hit in Gemic 29. And if I do, I'd be selling Tony, keeping Erling Haaland for one more week, and I'd be bringing in Solanke and potentially another Bournemouth player in the defence. So selling Foden for Son and Saka didn't work. Big red arrow with Saka and Saliba. Oh yeah, so part of your hits was to sell Foden, right? Yeah. Um, look, long term, the Son move will pay off. I, I really genuinely believe that. Uh, with Saka, it's a bit more difficult because he blanks in 29 and plays Man City in Gimmick 30. But Saka alone this week could certainly go off and be the highest scoring player for the game week. But I think Son is still a better option than Foden for the next four or five game weeks. So selling Foden this week, although the timing's a bit off, I don't think it's a bad decision per se. I think City need Grealish. Doku isn't the guy for big games. Look, Doku's young. He still has a lot of potential. He's very direct. He offers Man City something different. But right now, I think he's an impact sub. And actually with Grealish, he also links up very well with Haaland. And I think it makes Haaland an even better FPL option. Dryhill says 67 points and got Saliba and Gabriel to go. Planning to get Saka and Solanke for KDB and Darwin. Good transfers, very sensible. If you don't have Son though, I'd highly recommend Son over Saka for the next four game weeks. But yeah, I think overall looks good. You're just hoping that Saka goes quiet tomorrow. Um, Odegaard and Martinelli won't really affect you so much. But yeah, uh, with Saka, it's going to be a big ask. Uh, hey Dylan, is Solanke still a triple captain option for the next double? Senesi out and his injury scare. I don't know if it's risky. Yeah, of course. Wait for more updates. I think Solanke spoke to a reporter after the game. I don't know the exact name of the reporter. If I can get the name, I will tell you in future videos and streams. But um, Solanke did say he's very optimistic that he's going to play a part in both games. Now, play a part doesn't really mean he's going to start both games, but he should be in the squad. He might be on the bench for one game. That is a possibility. But if you're asking me, I think he starts both. Uh, Goldhead says Saka also has a spy next to his name. Yeah, if he hauls, the red gets bigger. Exactly. His effective ownership is, I think, over 100%, maybe even over 110 So you are right. For a lot of people, if you didn't captain Saka, it will result in a red arrow and losing rank due to any return he gets. Best three players to bring in next week. Um, look, I'll try to just generalize and give you three names off the top of my head, but it's all circumstantial. I don't know who you have already, for example, but I would say Solanke, Son, and... I'd probably go for Doughty. Just a, a rough free there. Now, with Doughty, I don't see a clean sheet, but an attack in return is certainly possible. Milner says 69 points with Sack and Gabriel to play. Good stuff. Green arrow secured. Lovely stuff from Kirkes. Gutted about Ariola, but at least the Bravka kept the clean sheet. Already um, est on the transfers, though I'm going to wait on them. Already set. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Good score. Um, and yeah, very unlucky with Ariola. I actually had him in my starting 11 throughout the whole week. I changed it the night before. I, st I stuck with it in the deadline stream. It was a mistake in the end in terms of the result, but I don't think it was a bad decision. Haaland, no bonus. 
to be honest, he doesn't deserve it. He doesn't deserve it at all. Uh, Bernardo got one. I think Rodri got two and Foden got three. No complaints there whatsoever. Haaland's chance alone, the one he missed, I think he deserves to be on minus bonus points of anything and maybe go down to four. Uh, so Hill says, with only Raya and Saka captain left, I need Arsenal to do well tomorrow as I only have 49 points so far. Yeah, Saka captain could be a game changer for you, to be honest. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he managed to salvage a green. I do wish you the best there. Um, but yeah, look, it's very fine margins at this stage. Any news on Adebayo? I'll see if Rob Edwards said anything after the game, but haven't seen anything um, pop up. So um, let's see if there's anything new. Um, no, the last update I can see is from the 26th of February, which was over a week ago. And uh, Rob Edwards said he's still out, like quite a lot of the teams uh, at the moment. We've got a good number of important players missing. That's pretty much all we have. He's currently being assessed, but no idea if he's going to feature for Gamic 28. And ultimately, I think it might just be worth going to Morris, Solanke for sure. Uh, and Luton Town now have 10 players unavailable, which is massive. Um, I think three of their centre-backs got injured. Mengi also went down with a scare. He almost went off. So it's just an absolute mess at the moment. Uh, going back to your questions, thank you to those that have been tuning in. I appreciate it. Smash the like button. Let's get the stream to over 100 likes. It'd be massively appreciated. Haaland's miss wasn't as bad as Kanu's miss. I mean, look, whether it's as bad or, you know, if it's better, I don't know, whatever it may be, it was a bad miss. It's as simple as that. He should have scored it. Um, it's been three game weeks that I'm taking a minus four. Do I retake one to replace Sanessi with Kirkes and Bailey with Barkley or Sanessi, Kirkes and Trippier to Doughty? Um, I don't think you need to take the hits in these cases. I know Bailey's facing Tottenham, but if you aren't free hitting in 29, why sell Bailey? He's in great form, by the way. The only concern with Bailey would be any knocks he picks up because he's quite injury prone and rotation because of Europa Conference League and Diaby did really well off the bench. He got that winning assist for Luca Dean. So there could be rotation from that perspective. But otherwise, I think Bailey's a keep. I wouldn't sell him. Senesi to Kirkes, I think is fine. If Sines Sorry, if Senesi's ruled out, or Gamic 28, fair enough, it makes sense to do that, right? But I'm not sure about Bailey to Barkley. You do get the extra fixture, but I'm not that really confident on that move, to be honest. In terms of the other transfers you propose at the end, yeah, they're absolutely fine, to be fair. Um, Senesi to Kirkes and Trippi to Doughty. I'm a bit more open to that. I don't think I'd do Bailey to Barkley, but I might change my mind. Barkley's been incredible, by the way, in recent games. Do you remember my quote on Haaland captain? The United taking shots part was right, just Haaland missing the chances himself, so it's Foden hauling. Well, no, I mean, you're right to point out the amount of chances and shots that United concede. And look, Erling Haaland tends to get the bulk of the chances. Now, if I'm not mistaken, he missed one big chance today, not as bad as the three he missed against Chelsea or the three he missed against Bournemouth, but Haaland, in the, you know, short of it, he's been very frustrating in recent weeks in FPL. He's scoring all these goals in the FA Cup, but, you know, a haul like that would have been nice, especially for the triple captaincy a couple of weeks ago there. 64 of Odegaard, Saka and Saliba to go, missed with captaining Haaland. At least you got a return, and uh, you can thank Amrabat for that. But, uh, yeah, you're fine. 64 is a decent score, and you've got a triple up of Arsenal. It's looking good. At this point, if I'm to keep any Man City asset, it's going to be Foden. Yeah, I don't know about Walker, to be honest. Um, he's not bad, of course, but yeah, Foden and Haaland for me are the only ones to really keep for the rest of the season, and Foden right now is the best option. Favourite sub for next game week? Favourite sub? Um, oh, if you're talking about my own players, I mean, I'm not so sure. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure, to be honest. Whistle goal against Chelsea or Rashford goal against City, which one was better? They're both incredible goals, but I think Rashford, just first time, you know, it's a Manchester derby goal, and I just love those goals which are on instinct and that hit the crossbar and go in. I don't know. It's I prefer that one, but Whistas is very underrated as well. Uh, three top players to sell next week. I'll talk about this in the transfer tips. I'll try to release it very soon, perhaps on the Tuesday, but this week is going to be quite hectic for me, um, and I'll have more time to think about this well, but De Bruyne for me is an absolute must-sell now. Um, I'd also look to sell, um, I'm trying to think here. I mean, a Stupinian, if you have him, is, is a sell. It might be Forrest at home. He might start. And to be fair to him, he has played well in the last couple of games, especially in the FA Cup. But I think a Stupinian is a very easy sell. So De Bruyne, a Stupinian, and I would probably go for, oh, it's a tricky one. It could be a Man City defender, to be fair, um, with... You know, facing two of the best teams in the league in Liverpool and Arsenal over the next three and blanking in 29. 
But yeah, apart from that, any other cells? Yeah, I'm going to stick with a, a City Defender, I guess. I might have to change that, though. Best captain for next week, Solanke. Of course, let's wait and see if he's available and ready to start both games. But if he is, I think Solanke's the best captain. Uh, Carr says Robbo, Dunk, Blank in the team and Gusto and Doughty on the bench. Such a shame. To be honest, I mean, look, you made the right decision with Robertson. Just a bad outcome. Very unlucky, to say the least. With Lewis Dunk, I mean, the fixture was there. I can understand why you did it. I probably would have done the same thing as you, to be honest. So... It is what it is. Um, with Robertson, I think you you made the absolute right call. He was the best defender for you this week, and you got shafted, really. 76 points with Saka to play. Great stuff. I have a bit of a dilemma next week. Do I get rid of Garnacho or Gordon for Barkley or Bowen? Um, I'd rather sell Garnacho. I think Gordon is a much better option, especially in home matches. So, yeah, if possible, I'd keep Gordon. Great fixtures until 35. I'd sell Garnacho. And depending on your gimmick 29 chip strategy are you free hitting in 29 if you are to be honest i'd still go for um jared bowen i think i'd go for him burnley at home this week and then um aston villa in gimmick 29 yeah the answer would be garnacho to bowen wasting says yeah whenever i say i'm finishing the discord server i always ended up doing fine that's all the reverse jinx yeah and obviously i do uh realize there uh, that i'm very far behind i'll try to uh catch up Sort of reverse jinx, fair enough. Uh, don't worry, I've done it myself, especially on Twitter. Uh, bench Palmer for Bowen next week. Yeah, I'd start Bowen over Palmer. But Palmer at home to Newcastle, I'd try to start him if possible. Nunez strike was heaven sent. Yeah, obviously, um, kind of heaven, as you say, uh, for Liverpool fans. Gutting for Nottingham Forest and especially those that support Man City and Arsenal. But yeah, the Premier League is going to be full of twists and turns until the end of the season. Andrew Barton says 75 points with Saliba and Saka to play. Great stuff. I'd be surprised if you don't reach 80 plus points, to be honest. KDB to Bowen for a minus four next week. Um, if you're not free hitting in 29, no questions about it whatsoever. I'd do it. I'm also on 61 with Arsenal. Free Arsenal to go. Good stuff. Uh, you will outscore me unless you get a shocking red card to your other player. 74 points so far. Still got Sack and Saliba. Yeah, a lot of good scores in the chat, which I'm pleased to see. Uh, hopefully a lot of green arrows as well. The whole Sonesi thing was just some classic FPL. The 90-minute man hasn't missed a game, and then I got him into my team, and he lasted 10 minutes. Can only laugh at the whole thing. Yeah, I think at the beginning of the season, he had some maybe 59-minute games, or he might have had 45 minutes and stuff, but he's been nailed on, as you can get, in the last couple of months, and he hasn't got injured, as far as I'm aware, for many, many months. So, yeah, you're very unlucky there, to say the least. I have already transferred in Bowen. Now thinking of Tony out of uh, for Solanke forward currently. Tony Morris Halland. Yeah, if you're not free hitting in 29, I would keep Tony. That's the only kind of argument I can make to keeping Tony. If you are free hitting, sell Tony. I think that's the right call. I'd rather keep Erling Haaland. Yeah, as Wei Seng says, join the Discord server. There's a link in the description below. You click it, you automatically join. We have hundreds of members. We're looking to get to 1,000 by the end of the year. So generally, there's so many tools there for UCL Fantasy and FPL and also a great community there on top of it. I just realized this is my first green arrow in five weeks, says Salah. Went down from 65k to 450k and now at 400k. Goal was top 10k, now maybe top 50. Top 50k would be an incredible return. I know people might scoff at it, but this season, and to be honest, just the way FPL is going, it's becoming more competitive. The template is as strong as ever. I think it's very tough to get even top 100k, I'd say, let alone top 10k. I think 50k would be a good return there. Hi, Dylan. I've got a very similar team to you, except I have Saliba instead of Estupinian. Um, What do you think of a wild card this week? Means I can get double uh, gimmick players and navigate blank gimmick 29. Well, look, there are some pros and cons, you know, to any chip strategy. Now, I do like how you cover gimmick 28 and 29 with the wild card, but what about gimmick 30 and beyond? You know, can you also deal with the fixture swings and build an optimal team for gimmick, 20, uh, gimmick 34, sorry, which is going to be potentially a mixture of blanks and doubles? Most likely, I think it's just going to be a set of double game weeks. And also, can you get the likes of Salah in gimmick 30 and also get Erling Haaland? It's going to be difficult, I think, to reshuffle your team later in the season. My preference is to wildcard in gimmick 30 or 31. And, you know, if it's between free hitting in 29 or wildcarding now, I'd rather play the free hit. The wildcard is the most powerful chip, and I think it's best to use later in the season. But it's team dependent, as always. Uh, I do have Sleeper, by the way. I don't have Gabriel. That's probably our difference. 
I wish I didn't have a stupid yen, but it is what it is. Courage says for Foden, now I worry about UCL match day A. Exactly. And I cover this in the team selection video already out for channel members and patrons. Unfortunately, I couldn't record it tomorrow, uh, which would have been ideal. Um, it just, I wouldn't have time to do it. Um, so I recorded it today before the Man City lineups were out, but I did assume that all of Ake, De Bruyne, Foden and Haaland started. So not much has really changed or been out of date as a result. But I'm very concerned now about all Man City players for the Champions League. And it could be rotation galore there. So Hill says, which combo to go for uh, for a midfield for Son, Saka, Salah, Palmer, uh, Foden plus Muniz, Fodder, or Tony plus Garnacho, Fodder? Um, well, overall, it has to be Foden and Muniz. But if you're not free-hitting in 29, I would rather have Tony than Muniz in that blank game week. I'm not going to lie to you. But overall, Foden and Muniz definitely wins that. Um, I have to say, Muniz is in, in great form. I have mentioned him actually earlier in the season before he's had this purple patch as just a cheap option to sit on your bench most of the time. But he's now someone you could genuinely start and maybe even include in your free hit team for Blank Gimmick 29. If you had a chance to still move the armband to Saka after knowing the City result, would you do it? Yes, 100%. Um, you know, I think Arsenal scored 15 goals in the last three away games. Sheffield United have conceded 15 goals in the last three home games. With Haaland just to come away with six points, I was expecting more. I thought he'd score a brace against Manchester United, so I definitely would move it. Is Stupinian to Doughty, I think, this week? Yeah. Um, I think the best defenders to buy this week are Kirkez or Zabini to cover Bournemouth and Doughty. Still couldn't believe this is the week of goalkeepers. Yeah, it just kind of sums up FPL. You've got to laugh. And one thing I've noticed is that when the Brafka does return, so does Ariola. So... You're kind of damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. You might even have your bench goalkeeper out scoring your main one. It is what it is. I know he doesn't deserve, but he's my captain. Well, I should prepare for a red arrow. Yeah, of course. I mean, look, I would have taken any bonus points. Don't get me wrong. I'm just, um, you know, I'm kind of uh, disappointed with Haaland, to say the least. Very disappointed. Even in UCL Fantasy, he blanked against Copenhagen. And he might be benched now in match day eight. Used a free hit already this season. Doing Haaland to Morris this week. And Huang to Song in the next do you think a minus four for Bowen is essential? Not essential. Sorry, I don't know what's happened to my voice. Not essential. Um, I don't think you have to do it, but I think it's a worthwhile transfer, to be fair. So yeah, I think in your case, you already used a free hit. Bowen is just a great option. Villa isn't the easiest of games, but Aston Villa are there to be targeted defensively. You saw them concede um, to Luton Town twice, in fact, after being 2-0 up. And I don't trust Aston Villa to keep any clean sheets in the short term. So, yeah, um, I'd go for Bowen. Should I buy Solanke now? Uh, no. Wait for more updates just in case. But um, I think Solanke will end up being a buy. And he will start both games in game at 28. Andrew says, yes. I'm a Sheffield Wednesday fan. Hope Arsenal torture them. Although I prefer Saliba to score. Oh, yeah. I, I'd love Saliba to score. But Gabriel is far more likely. And I'm hoping Gabriel stays quiet somehow. Maybe gets a booking. But... Um, at the same time, I don't want Gabriel being at risk of suspension. Zabini or Kirkes, Um, I said it the other day. Uh, yesterday, wasn't it? Uh, Kirkes is my slight preference. There's not much to separate them. They're not going to give you many attacking returns. I think it's just kind of pick one and hope that you get something on top of any clean sheets as well. Also, Luis or Bailey on a wild card. Uh, it's difficult because I do prefer Bailey for game at 29 away from home, but... On the other hand, Douglas Louise is nailed on. He's going to start every game. Bailey might be rotated very soon. I think purely for a, from an expected minutes perspective, I'd go for Douglas Louise just to be safe. And he's also on penalties. Uh, Gordon to Barkley. Yeah, I think it's worth it. Chelsea away for Gordon. And you've got three games for Barkley. Yeah, I'd do that. It's painful to sell Foden for next game week. Yeah, um, I don't want to do it myself, to be honest. But... It's something that has crossed my mind. I think I'll end up keeping him. He might go to my bench though, and I don't want to do that. Um, what could end up happening, uh, and my current plan would be Tony to Solanke, and that means I have to bench one of Palmer, Foden, um, Anthony Gordon to be fair. I think if I keep Gordon, I think he's the one who's going to drop to my bench yet again, and I'll start Foden. Dryhill says, yeah, Son is what I was thinking instead of Saka for next week, but I'm not sure how good Son's record is against Villa. Six goals in eight games against Aston Villa with one assist. He's got a great record against them, uh, against them, sorry. 
that's something I mentioned before, and another key reason why I brought him in. He also doesn't have a great record against Fulham, who he faces in 29, but he got a goal and assist earlier this season. I think Son's a great buy now. He was last week, and even in game week 29. Thank you, Leonardo. Uh, Anthony says, is the hit worth it? To bring in Doughty and Kirkes, or do I bring in one of the two options? And if yes, which one? Um, I'm a bit reluctant, to be honest, but I think it is worth it because you're getting two doublers. And in the case of Doughty, he features in 29. If you're not free hitting, Doughty ticks two boxes and he's got attacking potential. So my answer is yes, although I'm very close to you know going towards no. It's very split, but I'm going to go for yes. Is Luton player a one-week punt or good with five-plus game weeks? Um, I'd say Luton is a good punt for the next two game weeks, 28 and 29. After that, not really so much, to be honest. Um, they face Tottenham in game week 30, away from home. KS says, hey Dylan, I have Gabriel, Ake, Moreno, uh, Porro, Estupinian. Should I play Estupinian, get Doughty for Moreno, and bench Ake? Also looking at minus four, Tony to Solanke. Same here. Um, I wouldn't play Estupinian. He might start against Forrest, but even if he does, I don't trust Brian defensively at all. I think Forrest will score, and Estupinian has been an awful FPL asset, to say the least. Um, Doughty for Moreno. I would only do that transfer if you're free-hitting in 29. If you're not free-hitting, I wouldn't sell Moreno. I know Luca Dean came on, scored the winning goal. He might even get a start in 29, but yeah, selling Moreno, I don't know about that. But yeah, buying Doughty, right call. I'd potentially buy a Bournemouth defender as well, like Kirkes and Stime over Estupinian, of course, or just sell Estupinian. Uh, thank you, Madrid. Uh, signing off. Good night, guys. Don't forget to like the stream and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much. I'll see you very soon, potentially for the UCL Fantasy stream. I think you play that as well. Uh, Gross sell. Yes. I actually was asked about buying him last week, and I said the boat has sailed. Uh, it's too late now. Only two gig games coming up, and then a blank in 29. And even against Fulham, he was benched, which was a huge surprise. But yeah, Gross for me, he's not someone to buy right now, that's for sure. And if you do have Gross, I think you could even sell him to Barkley. You could even go to Jared Bowen, Bailey, Douglas Louise. KDB is a big sell for me. Yes. Yes, I completely agree. Pankaj says 60 points with Saka, Gabriel, and Odegaard left. Good stuff, mate. Good stuff. Green Arrow should be guaranteed. Would you rather sell Ake or Moreno for Doughty? I'd rather sell Ake. Especially if you're free hitting. Sorry, if you're not free hitting in 29. Saka captain Havertz and Gabriel to go. Free hit 29 is on. I wish you the best there, Denver. Uh, Saka captain, though, I'm hoping he is a bit quiet. Uh, one return, I don't really mind so much, but anything more could damage me in my mini leagues and also my rank. Saka's my captain, says Pankaj. Good luck. Sahil says, I bought Nate Nuri last week, got me 12 points, and this week, zero. Well, I'm not too surprised by that. It's Newcastle way. Um... I was asked about Nuri and whether to start him over other defenders. And I think every single time I said to bench Nuri. So, yeah. Um, at least you got a 12-pointer in game 26. Uh, Chevain says 67 points with Saka captain. A lot of Saka captain is in the chat. And Saliba left. Took a minus 8, though. Still looks like a green arrow. Yes. If Saka gets any return, yeah, I think it's a green arrow there. Haaland to Solanke and Foden to Bowen for a hit. Also, Adebayo starts. I'm not sure about Adebayo starting. Um, there's no recent updates as far as I'm aware, um, so that's something to monitor. Overall, though, the hit is worth it, you know, especially if you're not free hitting in 29. Uh, Bowen is a great transfer in, so yeah, I would take that hit. Selling Foden and Haaland is always difficult, but you can always buy them back in 30 or 31. Minus 4 for Senesi, very unlucky. I almost did it myself. I think the only reason I didn't do it is because I was on the wrong tab. I was on my um, family member's team instead. And, uh, you know, I got confused between that and my own squad and then the deadline passed and I couldn't do it. So I was a bit fortunate there. Rayhan says Solanke, Watkins, Haaland, uh, Bowen, Foden, Son, Saka, Palmer. Which one to bench? You definitely don't bench Bowen this week. Um, even Saka. I think from those players, yeah, Solanke, you're not going to bench when he's got a double, surely. So honestly, it has to be between the City players to bench. Um, you could argue Palmer. I'd bench one of Haaland or Foden, though. Isak Mag says, thoughts on Foden to Son if I'm not free-hitting in 29? Yeah, and you're right there. Foden's been incredible, but yeah, Liverpool this week, blank, Arsenal at home. I think Foden to Son is a great transfer this week. Uh, you did the right thing to keep him in game at 27, and I now sell him in your situation. Uh, whoever wins the game between Liverpool C are most likely to win the league. I agree. I think that could certainly uh, shift the momentum. If Liverpool win... 
Yeah, and they've got the best fixtures, arguably, until the end of the season. I think they would be the favourites. Um, I'm still... I still think C are the favourites for me, but yeah, Liverpool are second, and then Arsenal third. Accidentally starting Ariola worked okay for me. There you go. Um, you know, at least something positive did work in your favour. Tony versus Watkins, who's a better player? Um, I'd say Watkins. I mean, look, Tony is a good striker. I think with that nine-month layoff, it is very difficult to come back from that. I think he will show his quality until the end of the season, but... What Watkins is doing right now, by the way, is incredible. I even said it before the Luton game. He's a contender for player of the year. It's going to become a, a big shout now. He's got the most goal contributions of any player, the most FPL points. He's been incredible. If Solanke looks like he's going to rise throughout the week, shall I do an early transfer Alvarez to Solanke? I can see why you're thinking about it. Not much to lose. Alvarez away to Liverpool and Alvarez has been benched recently, but I'd just wait. I'd rather wait. Uh, Barry says, seeing the Foden double has made me look forward to dinner. Can't wait to devour that chicken roast. Fair enough, Barry. Um, I wonder who you support, but yeah, uh, enjoy your dinner. Should I go for double Arsenal after Gimmick 29 free hit? Um, not in Gimmick 30, but I would in Gimmick 31. Um, I think it's really difficult to get defenders um, who are reliable. So once they face Luton Town at home in 31, Gabriel Saliba double up with Saka up front. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. 69 minus 4. Yeah, good score there, Tim Pan. Two left. It's looking good. Who's the biggest sell this week? Walker or Robertson? I'd actually argue Walker um, because it's Liverpool away. You'd probably favour Liverpool a little bit more because it's at Anfield. They both blank in 29. And in Gemic 30, Liverpool have Brighton at home, whilst Man City have Arsenal at home. I'd rather sell Walker. Um, now, if you are wildcarding in 31, I think that's the way to go. Sell Walker. If you're not wildcarding, though, I'd argue Man City's fixtures from Gimmick 31, 32 um, until the end of the season are better than Liverpool. So it's tricky, I think, but I think I'd sell Walker. Idol says, if you're free hitting in 29, would you rather keep Haaland or Foden? Um, if I'm free hitting in 29, difficult. Um, I think I'd rather keep Foden. Yeah, it gives you more... Um, Look, it's a difficult question, to be fair. Um, and even for those that aren't free-hitting, it's a very tight call, but I think Foden is the one to keep. It was a great idea to Captain Watkins. <laughs> you said it, not me. Um, Luton Town conceded six to Man City, five to Haaland. So it was a good decision, I think, for those that went there. Click the like button. Thank you very much, uh, Modi Jr. Massively appreciated. And to those that are still tuning in, we've got over 130 people watching. Smash the like button. Let's get this to over 100. It costs nothing. And we're also going through many questions today. As always, I don't know what my, what's happening with my voice and also my brain, but uh, I'm trying my best. Uh, Isaac says my team is Ariolo, Debravka, Borro, Gabriel, Doughty, Trippier, Ake, Saka, Palmer, Foden, Bowen, Louise, Watkins, Haaland, and Solanke. What to do? Not free hitting in 29. I can see why. You've got a decent base there for the blank. Um, I think I'd consider Trippier to a Bournemouth defender. So Kerkez or Zabini. Um, you could even go for a goalkeeper change. And I'd argue Dubravka to Neto is the best call. So I'd do one of those transfers, I think. Um, you already have Solanke. Fair enough. I would also be open to Haaland to Morris. I know it sounds crazy, but three games compared to one over the next two games, it makes, it makes sense. Yeah, I think I'd do that. Haaland to Morris. I <laughs> can't believe I'm saying that, but yeah. I think that's a good transfer for you. And probably Neto in for one of your goalkeepers, preferably Dubravka. If not, you buy Kerkez or Zabani for Trippier. I think that's the way to go. Uh, thoughts on Luton defenders, not Doughty. As a short-term... Trippier defender because of the double. Well, you mentioned Bell. He came off of an injury. Um, so I'm not sure how long that's going to be. Let me just double check the latest update about um, Amari Bell. Uh, just one second. So yeah, he came off very early against Aston Villa. Uh, so yeah, the latest update from yesterday was, I don't know the extent of it at the moment, but we can't moan about it. We can't complain. We can only keep together and find solutions. So not really anything conclusive there. The same goes for Adebayo. A lot of injuries for Luton Town. 10 at the moment, as I mentioned earlier. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't go for Bell. If you can't go for Doughty, I think the one to go for 
I mean, it's probably just Mengi. Um, he's a bit more nailed on. With Kabore, if certain players come back, Kabore could easily drop down to the bench. Now, if it's confirmed that Luton Town have all these injuries at the back and they're not available for double gimmick 28, I think I then switch it to Kabore. But right now, just to be safe, Mengi is the one. Denver says, I don't trust Solanke for captaincy next game week. Any other suggestions outside of Saka Haaland? I wouldn't captain Haaland this week, to be honest. I think Sal is a decent shout against Man City. Um, he could easily get a goal and bonus points. But I'd be looking at Son against Villa. I really like him. Watkins at home to Tottenham. They're two underrated options for me. Um, trying to think of other players. I think Colton Morris could be decent for the double. And I think that's about it. Yeah. Um, there's always going to be a surprise package, isn't there? But outside of those two that you're mentioning and you don't trust Solanke, I would say one of Morris, Son or Watkins. If Solanke is not available in Gimmick 28, should we consider Morris for captain? Yes, yes, 100%. If Solanke is fine, is triple captaining a good choice? I think so. And I'd still play the triple captain on him if I had it. I'm having my best season ever. Don't know where I'll land in the end, but I'm having fun with the game. So it doesn't really matter. That's great to hear, Beardy. Obviously, some people might be having their worst season ever and also not enjoying the game as a result, but... Even when something goes horribly wrong, like in my case, benching Gordon and Areola, it's good to laugh about it because it's just a game at the end of the day. Uh, Dixie Normas says, would buying Morris instead of Solanke and captaining and be the ultimate differential play? I'm not against it. And Morris, you know, I actually highlight him in preseason as one of the best options from newly promoted teams. He had a decent start. He scored a penalty in that 4-1 loss, I think, against Brighton. Um... Then he had that patch where he was benched a lot, but he's come back into the team. He scored that crucial goal against Burnley, I think, and that's how he managed to re-enter the starting eleven. And honestly, Morris is on penalties. There's a lot to like there. I don't mind it so much, but I'm not going to lie to you. If Solanke starts both games, I'd much rather captain him. That's just my personal opinion. I'm a bit of a template manager sometimes, and uh, I'm trying not to be. I'll try to improve upon that in the weeks to come, but yeah, I do prefer Solanke. Adil says, Sonesi, Alvarez, and Foden. Zabani, Solanke, and Barkley, minus eight. Um, I'd go for it. Uh, I'd go for it, I think, just about. If Sonesi's out, make the transfer at the back. Alvarez to Foden, to Solanke and Barkley. Yeah, it makes complete sense. Two games for Solanke compared to one for Alvarez and Foden over the next two. You get three games from Barkley. I think I would do it, but there's always a risk. The one I'm most uncomfortable about selling is obviously Foden, because not just what he did today, he's been in great form this season. Is Sinesi ruled out for next week? No, I don't think he's ruled out yet, but it doesn't look good, uh, to be quite honest with you. I'm not sure if we've got a quote yet. We probably do, but I can't find it um, about Mr. Sinesi. I'll keep an eye on. Uh, I'll try to check it now quickly. Let's see if I can find it on Twitter. Any updates on Sinesi? I don't see anything pop up for me. Um, any updates? We probably have to wait a little bit more, uh, unfortunately. Yeah, um, gonna have to wait. Yeah, so unfortunately I can't provide you any update right now. Free hit 29 and wildcard 30 to get Salah in. I'm not so sure about that, to be honest. I mean, it's a good plan. But I want to just wildcard in 30 just to get Salah in. Uh, it might be better for you to wildcard in 31. It's all team dependent, of course, Fruit Plug. But if you've got a solid plan, you're happy with how your team looks for 28, 29, 30, and then going into the end of the season with those chip strategies, then yeah, fair enough. I'd go for it. But I'm not sure what your team structure is. Thank you, Dryhill. Uh, Dylan Hudson says, do I bring in Tony Solanke or Morris for Adebayo? Uh, Solanke, but wait for more updates. If he's out, I'd go for Morris next. Um, all doublers for free hit team in 29. Yeah. Would you buy Isak if you already have Gordon? No, I wouldn't buy Isak right now. Um, if you want to buy a striker, Solanke, Morris, Tony for the blank. And of course, Watkins goes without saying, but I wouldn't buy any other forward right now. Should I sell Trippi and Alvarez? I'd say so. Yeah. Uh, GVBB says, should I buy Son and Doughty minus four for Huang and Trippi, Ake or Porro? Um, I'm going to free in 29. I only have one gimmick transfer. Um, yeah, I would buy Son and Doughty, and I'd probably sell Trippier, but all of them are potentially sells in your case. I'd probably keep Bodrob because he also features in 30. Well, they all do, but he's got a good fixture there against Luton Town at home. Aki has Arsenal at home in 30. Um, 
you could argue Trippier's fixture isn't so bad in 30, actually. Um, maybe, you know what? I think maybe Ake is the one to sell for you. But you might want Ake for gimmick 31 or 32, so it kind of goes both ways there. If you're wildcutting in 31, I'd sell Ake. If you're not wildcutting in 31, I'd probably sell Trippier. Zar says, would a minus 8 be worth it to do Garnacho to Barkley, the Bravka to Neto, Van Heck to Doughty? Um, yes, I think it will pay off. Uh, Miles H says, contemplating a risky strategy in 29 to save the free hit. What do you think about starting 7-8 players that week to avoid it and hold for 34-37? I'm not against that. I've said it many times on this channel. It's not just about the quantity of players, but the quality. If you cover Jeroboam, Son, Watkins, Tony, and potentially another attacker such as Madison, I think you're fine for gimmick 29. But if you have to take many hits to get to 7 or 8 players, I'd rather play the free hit. So it's all team dependent. Wei Sing says, Brighton players are hard to own. I realized that very early since I own Steel. Yeah, look, um, a lot was made about Ryan Ramsdale, that situation, but with Brighton, it's literally Steel playing a few games, then Verbruggen. It's been just a constant mess at the back. Estupinian was a decent option to own from the beginning, same with Matoma, uh, but things have kind of derailed for both of them, unfortunately. Hopefully, Matoma recovers soon, but his season is over. Yeah, um, it took me a bit of a while, actually, probably around gimmick 5 or 6 when I started to realise that. Adnan says, bought Kerkes for minus 4. At least I got a clean sheet. Yeah, look, fair play. Um, Kerkes was my next favourite, but I always said, for me, Neto's the best, then it's Sanessi, then it's Kerkes, then Zabini, but ultimately, Bournemouth defenders aren't great. I think Kerkes averages 2 points per game, actually. Uh, Tristan Parkey says, crappy gimmick for me, on 42 points, 2 to go. This game has become too template. I do agree with that. The top assets need to be more expensive. If you have a couple of bad weeks, it's like moving through quicksand. Yeah, one thing F1 Fantasy have done, for example, is make it very expensive. So it's so difficult to build a really good team on paper. You have to go for a lot of budget options and make sacrifices. So you choose to either go for Verstappen. And if you go for him and Red Bull, then you're going to have a really poor rest of your squad. But it's all about balance. So yeah, maybe you are right about that. To be honest, though, UCL Fantasy is arguably cheaper, but it's somehow way more open and less template. So it can go both ways. Clement in Guy says, KDB is Stupinian Huang to Son Zabini Tavernier for a minus four. Um, I'm not a big fan of Tavernier. He might return in this double. And if you are quite confident about him, go for it. Don't let me discourage you. I'm just saying from my point, point of view, I'm not a big fan of Tavernier, um, especially in his current form. If it was earlier in the season, fair enough. He had a purple patch. I do like Son and um, Zabini though, for the defenders you're selling in Stupinian. Yeah, and I think Son for KDB is a no-brainer. Do you see Harry Kane vibes in Watkins? Imagine him and Haaland swapping teams this season. Incredible. Look, Watkins is having a great season, but Harry Kane is on, on another level, in my opinion, um, to Watkins. But yeah, maybe Watkins in general has been quite underrated. He can miss a lot of big chances, but then again, even Haaland does, and the best strikers in the world do. Um, but yeah, for me, Harry Kane is a much better footballer than Watkins. Ken Back says, hey Dylan, 67 points with Saka, Saliba and Gabriel still to play. 101k rank, good stuff. Uh, transfer out Van Dijk for Zabini, as his minutes are more nailed than Kirkes. Yeah, that's fine. Look, I said this many times. There's not much, if anything, to separate Zabini and Kirkes. I um, compared the stats in the last stream. They both had seven shots for the season. Their XG was minimal, close to zero. Um, so really just need luck about picking the defender. If they get an attack and return, celebrate, open a champagne, whatever it may be. But it's down to luck there. Anthony Rad says, do you reckon Kabore starts the two games in the double? Yeah, good point you make there. I think he does start both games, but it ultimately depends on whether the Luton Town defenders recover or not. If they do, then Kabore won't start both games. But right now, yes, I think he does. Wildcard active, do I keep Foden? I wouldn't keep Foden on the wildcard. Um, if you want to navigate 29 without the free hit, I would sell Foden, but I would buy him back for gimmick 30 or 31. That's for sure. Uh, Mustafa says, who should I bench for Solanke? Palmer, Bailey, Watkins, Foden, Saka, Haaland. What, um, you said Watkins twice. I'm not sure who the other player there is, but I definitely wouldn't bench Watkins. I think Bailey's the one to bench there, actually, despite his incredible form. And actually thinking about it, he could really just cook both Spurs fullbacks uh, quite easily. He can shift on both sides. But yeah, I'd probably bench Bailey. Uh, Adil says, which do you prefer if you're free hitting in 29? Alan to Morris or Foden to Barkley? Alan to Morris. 
Uh, Gary says, do I have to use a transfer if free hitting and have two for 28? Um, yeah, if you're free hitting in 29 and you've got two free transfers this week, I would use it because I think you can find a way to optimize your team for the double. So I would use at least one transfer. Adil says, best double gimmick midfielders and defenders in your opinion. Uh, midfielders, Barkley, I'd say one of Tavernier or, um, or Kloivert. It's really slim pickings there. It was Cook today who got two assists, but I wouldn't recommend him. Um, as for defenders, I would say Doughty and probably Kirkes. Now, you could argue Zabini as well. Take your pick from those two Bournemouth defenders, and then I would also go for uh, Doughty. In my opinion, though, the best options overall would be Solanke first, Morris second, and Neto third. Thank you, Chad. Much much appreciated, mate. Uh, just the Parkio 6 says, I have learned some valuable things this year. Huang is another troll like Cash, James, Chilwell, Jackson. Huang pump was never worth it. I should have gone for a long-term player. Look, I think it made sense for a lot of people because for those free hitting in 29, Huang had good fixtures before, like Fulham at home in 28. Um, even Newcastle away looked like an appealing fixture. But once we saw Huang get injured and Cunha on top of it, yeah, you kind of just thought about it and thought, you know what? Newcastle can keep a clean sheet now, but we didn't have that perception before those injuries happened. Um, look, ultimately, I made a mistake going for Huang, and I was actually very close to getting Douglas Louise. I should have stuck with it. I didn't. Um, you hope that you learn these lessons, of course, but there's no set formula, and sometimes you get lucky with these picks. It could have been Huang delivering against Sheffield. Douglas Louise gets injured. There's always these fine margins in FPL. Any idea whether Kabore will keep his place? Ultimately, it depends on the injuries for Luton Town, whether these defenders come back. If they do, I don't think Kabore plays both games. However, if there is no recovery there, then yeah, Kabore is going to start both games because there's no one else. Did you see? No, I'm not going to say that, mate. I'm not falling for it. Um, KK Owner says, what do you think about going without Haaland and just going Foden? But the next three, four game weeks, absolutely fine. Um, I even argue both of them ourselves, but... I still think Haaland from Gemic 32 until the end of the season is a great option. I know he's been frustrating recently, but even in his so-called bad patch, he's got six goals in his last two games. He's a ridiculous player, um, at least goal scorer. But yeah, um, Foden for me is the best Man City asset right now. Then it's Haaland. But ultimately, those are the only two Man City players I want until the end of the season. Twister Park, he says, I bought Tony for Watkins and then injuries, etc. made it difficult to go back, plus needed Solanke. Then hoped it would get away with it after 30. Tony's fixtures are better. Yeah, look, um, there's a lot of talk about selling Watkins from gimmick 30 onwards. I'm not sure if I can do it. Um, I even talked about it in my chip strategy with a provisional gimmick 31 wildcard team. It was kind of very rough and I didn't have Watkins there. And I don't know, man, I can't bring myself to do that. Aston Villa might not have any doubles for the rest of the season. I don't think they will actually. But having said that, I think Watkins is a season keeper. I've said it many times. I sold him twice this season. I've been burned by him massively. So yeah, I think Watkins is a must-have. He's far better than Tony right now. And speaking of Tony, he's been a fawn in my side. I've lost probably 20, 30, maybe 40 points because of him. So yeah, I just have to blame myself for that. Yusuf says Zabani Solanke Son for a minus four hit for selling Richarlison at a Bale Trippier. I'm free hitting in 29 and I have Doughty. Um, interesting. I do like the transfers. I really do. Uh, overall, I would take the hit. Wait for more Adebayo updates, but it's not looking good. And ultimately, Solanke is an upgrade. Um, yeah, I take the hit. Honestly, even if Son, you know, you don't need him so much because you're free hitting in 29. Son's a captaincy option in Gemic 30 against Luton Town. So yeah, overall, take a minus four hit. Uh, yeah, uh, Ashraf says KDB hauled in every competition except Premier League. Yeah, New Seal Fantasy, I actually bought him in the last few minutes. He did very well for me. Um, I don't think I've ever had De Bruyne in the last year or so. Um, I'm trying to think about it. Even the last two years, I can't remember the last time I had De Bruyne. It's ridiculous, but I don't trust him in the Premier League because of his injury record, um, the constant managing of minutes. I think he's going to be benched though in the Champions League now and start against Liverpool, and I hope it's the other way around. Just the park, he says, probably a no-win situation. If I don't get Watkins, I may fall further behind. Not going to lie, mate. Even though it's Tottenham at home, I think it's a great fixture. And then facing West Ham away, I think Watkins is a must-have for the next two, personally. Any chance to sell Watkins in the future? Yeah, um, obviously, I just covered that uh, a few minutes ago. For me, 
there is a slim chance because you can go for a Hoyland who might double in 34 with Newcastle and Sheffield United at home. You've also got Erling Haaland who is Erling Haaland. But honestly, I'd try to have Ivan Tony, Ivan Tony, Ollie Watkins in my team until the end. I really do. Army NE says, hi Dylan. Uh, KDB to Son, Huangi Chan to Bowen and Kabori to Kirkes minus eight. Thoughts Dylan? Would give a great bench boost for important fixtures in my mini league. I like the transfers, no problems with them whatsoever. Wang Yi Chan is out for the foreseeable. I think it could be six weeks. Um, Kabore to Kirkes. Now that could backfire because Kabore might start both games now uh, with all the injuries Luton Town have. That's the only hit I'm a bit unsure about. But Bowen and Son, go for it. How badly does missing chances affect bonus points? I don't know the exact figures. It also depends on um, how many big chances it is and also the quality of the big chance, I guess. But... I think it does have a massive effect. It could basically take a play out from one bonus point all the way out and nowhere near the bonus points, if I'm not mistaken. My first time playing F1 Fantasy, I picked Verstappen and Red Bull, then auto filled the rest, forgot to really pick the team before deadline, but ended up leading my mini league here. Lucky. Um, based on the auto fill aspect, I'd say that's lucky, but picking Verstappen and Red Bull is common sense, I'd say. I actually don't have Red Bull. I've got Ferrari and Mercedes, um, and overall, that's better than... Red Bull and Aston Martin or Red Bull and any other constructor. But yeah, F1 is quite interesting this year. It does seem limiting um, in terms of the options being so expensive, but it also does open up the... Um, it basically loosens the template a little bit. So it goes both ways there. Sell Edison or Dubravka for Neto? Um, I'd sell Edison. Now, your problem, Greenia, if you don't free hit in 29... You've got no goalkeeper there. I mean, look, ultimately goalkeepers are just an absolute lottery this season. But yeah, I'd rather sell Edison. Do you think a Bournemouth defender outscores a Luton defender playing twice in 28 and 29? Great question. Really good question. Um, I'd say yes, unless the Luton Town defender in question is Doughty. I think Doughty, based on assists and bonus points potential is probably the best defender to buy for the next two game weeks. In my case, I'm likely to free hit in 29, so I'm more likely to buy a Bournemouth defender than Doughty. But if I'm covering both game weeks, I think Doughty's the one to go for. You think Mac 10 will wear the 10 in the national team in the future? I think there's a rumour, uh, or I think the Argentinian, the AFA president, so the Argentinian Federation president, said that the number 10 will be retired. I think that's a massive mistake. I know it's messy, but... Argentina have always had historical number 10s. Mario Kempes, Maradona. It's a big mistake to retire the number 10. So my answer is no, based on what he said. I hope they don't retire the number 10. And if they don't, I don't think McAllister really should get it. Um, he should be happy with what he has. Uh, the one he won the World Cup with. I capped an Odegaard. Do you think it will pay off? I hope it does for you, mate. I really do. Do I think it pays off? I'll be honest. My gut feeling is no, but I hope it does. I really do. Dion says, any argument for keeping Borro if wildcarding 31 and free hitting 29? Yes, because in game 30, good fixture against Luton Town at home. And if you're not free hitting, oh yeah, you're saying you're free hitting in 29. Yeah, uh, I still think there's a slight kind of um, pro based on game 30, but that's the only argument I can really find there. When are you wildcarding, mate? It's not set in stone, but Gemic 31 is the most likely. Check out my chip strategy guide, which I uploaded on Thursday. I talk about all the chips and my plans for each one of them and some alternative strategies for people watching. Not 42 points this week, 53 with two to go. Oh, that's better. Um, and hopefully your remaining Arsenal players do the job. Anthony Rad says, what are your transfers or plans to transfer Salah? Because I can't see any way to own Son, Haaland, Watkins and Salah. That's the problem, isn't it? Um... You have to make sacrifices. If I end up not free hitting in 29, I will keep Tony and sell Hallen to Solanke or Carlton Morris. That could be my plan. And then in Gamic 20, um, sorry, in Gamic 30, I would have enough funds to upgrade maybe Saka to Salah as a one week punt. Then I could wildcard in 31, bring Saka back in, or I could even sell any other midfielder. So there's a few things I could do. But basically, if I don't free in 29, for me, it's going to be very simple. I just saw one of my midfielders to Salah in Gemic 30. Uh, Sean says, Watkins is the cash cow to get Salah. True. That is true. Salah, Son, Foden, Saka, Palmer midfield is nice and going back to 3-5-2. Yeah, that is true. Um, there's not any essential player, so to speak. 
There are some people without Haaland all season who are doing really well. And you can build a great team without Watkins. And that midfield five you mentioned is incredible, uh, to be quite honest. So, yeah, I think if that's the reason why you don't go for Watkins, I understand that. And you can go for Hoyland instead, who could double in Gemic 34. That's absolutely fine. I don't know how people found it reasonable, even obvious to sell Foden before Man United. Great form and always shows up against United. Not surprised with the haul. Look, I agree with you. But also consider the other thing. Erling Haaland, who always does well against Man United. He just about got away with a return. And that's because of Amrabat making the mistake. Sometimes players have off days. And Man United were frustrating Man City for the most of the game. They had a game plan of stifling them. Um, I wouldn't actually say that, stifling them. Because Man City had so many chances and shots. But yeah, we all knew what United were going to try to do. And in the end, it didn't work. And it's not for the first time in an away game against a big team. But yeah, I kept saying to people, keep Foden for Man United. Do not sell him. And he still was one of the most sold players for Gaming 27. But you also have to understand that for some people's teams and their situations, it might have made sense. They might not be free hitting in 29. They might have used it already. And they went to Son, who is the better transfer, the better player over the next four or five game weeks. But... Foden for Gemic 27, he was always going to be one of the best players. I think he was fourth in my captaincy list. I think it was Haaland first, Saka second, I put Son third, Watkins fourth, Foden fifth. I think that was my top five captaincy list. Miguel MJ says, I had bought Sonesi last week. Should I make a sideways move or just do something else? By the way, I'm planning on not free hitting in 29. Yeah, obviously, wait for more updates, but. If Sonesi is out, I would sell him, um, especially if you're really, you know, trimmed down at the back. If you've got a stupid and the cells like me, I think that needs a lot of attention. Solanke is not the same player as last year yet. Uh, timeout and crappy fixtures making it hard. I don't know. I mean, there has been a bit of a drop off, but I think since the Spurs game, he has suffered this injury problem. Um, Iriola said that in the latest press conference on Friday. Look, Solanke did deliver 12 points against Newcastle when I sold him. And for me, this set of doubles, he's going to return for me. If he starts both games, um, I'd be very surprised if he didn't. If you do Haaland to Morris and Menu and bench Foden, or Foden to Barkley, Tavernier and bench Haaland, no free hit 29. Yeah, true. Um, I was actually thinking about it when I responded to someone who mentioned Morris earlier. Instead of going for Solanke, I could just go for Morris. And that helps me cover game at 28 and 29. And I get an extra doubler. For 28, I also cover 29, so it might be the best call for my team. If Solanke's out, that might be a blessing in disguise for me, and that could result in me saving the free hit for later. That's a great point. How many doublers is good for Gimmick 28 if I'm not free hitting in 29? I wouldn't be that desperate to have four, five, six players from these doublers. I think three is a good number, to be honest. And <laughs> I'm probably going to end up with two. What do you think of um, dead ending into 33, free at 34, wildcard 35, and bench boost 37? Good strategy. It's all team dependent, of course, but I think that could work. It really could. My preference is to free hit in 29 or 34, wildcard in 31, and bench boost in 37. But ultimately, if you wildcard closer to the bench boost, you're probably going to optimize it much better than if you wildcard earlier in the season. So I do like it. If I'd kept Watkins, would be in the top 2,000. Like you, Dylan, Tony Kill in my rank, as in no Watkins. Yeah, like it is what it is. And I'm actually thinking about myself. I don't think I'd be top 2,000, but I'd easily have 40 plus points more if I'd kept Tony. Sorry, if I kept Watkins. I don't want to mention Tony ever again. Um, yeah, I, I can feel your pain there. But look, it is what it is. Watkins has been incredible. Aston Villa have been one of the best teams in the Premier League. And Brentford are really struggling at the moment, and they're in a relegation battle right now. I thought with Tony's return, Brentford would go on a good run and potentially be safe already, but I think that will happen once the good fixtures come in Gaming 32. Watkins is definitely a sell in 31 for me. City, Brentford, Arsenal are difficult fixtures. True, that is true. He got three points combined against City and Arsenal, and that was at home. Yes, you say that, but didn't he blank... Um, against Sheffield United at home and then got 18 points away. I don't think Watkins is that typical great at home, kind of inconsistent away. He's great in terms of both home and away. Um, I think that would definitely apply to a Douglas Luiz, not to an Ollie Watkins. But I do get your point. Arsenal's the best defence. He's facing them. I think Brentford's a good fixture, to be honest. Um, I think that's a good one. City, though, I do concede that is a tough 
game there, especially at the Etihad. And if I had Watkins then, I'd probably bench him potentially, especially with an eight-man attack. So, yeah, fair point. And to be honest, if it allows you to go for that midfield five someone mentioned earlier, then selling Watkins makes sense. But it's so difficult to part with a player that good. Is Watkins on awesome M level yet? Difficult to compare, um, to be honest. This season, Watkins has been better, but Osimhen was world-class last season, and he's also done it in the Champions League. I'd probably say no, but Watkins is not that far away, actually. Vivek says, getting Salah will make my defence very weak. Yeah, but to be honest, though, what defenders are good right now? Saliba and Gabriel? Probably um, a Liverpool defender? I don't really think there are many good defenders at the moment. Yusuf says who to bench. Uh, thank you very much, by the way, for the kind words. I would probably bench Gordon. I know he just returned, but Chelsea away. Yeah, I think I'd bench him. Will you keep the likes of Saka, Gabriel, Palm and Solanke if you have value tied up? Or uh, will you sell and buy them back as part of the wildcard? Uh, my current plan isn't to sell them. Um, no, I don't think I'd sell them. Play Ariola versus Burnley or Kaminsky? Goalkeeper questions. I'd probably go for Kaminsky purely for the double. Not going to lie, though. I think West Ham have a better chance of keeping a clean sheet. Oh, that's really tricky, man. Um, and Ariola's decent at seven penalties. He's saved two this season, I think. You know what? I think I'd, I think I'd go for Kaminsky still, but just about. Watkins, if he had penalties, he would be permanent captain. I think he missed his last penalty, though, and that's the reason why he doesn't have them. So it could go the other way. He might have missed a few. Still don't understand why Watkins can't take pens uh, because he isn't the most consistent penalty taker. I think last season he took one against, uh, was it Tottenham? I'm not sure. It was a home game. I think uh, it might have been around gimmick 32 or something back in March, April, and he missed it. So, yeah, he's not a good penalty taker. Which teams to target in gimmick 31 and beyond? Uh, Arsenal, Man City, but I'd probably just say the two Man City players in Haaland and Foden. Um, I'd maybe say Manchester United. Newcastle have good fixtures until 35. I'd say Chelsea. They could have two doubles in that period. So yeah, those are the teams to target. And from Chelsea, it's probably Gusto and um, Palmer. Yeah, you can send your team, uh, Adil. I'll try my best to cover it. I'd rather have some water. You've been speaking continuously for a while now. Yeah, thank you. Sometimes I just forget, to be honest, and my voice seems fine. Getting rid of Haaland. Yeah, uh, I might do it myself, especially if I don't um, if I don't free hit. Thank you, Amal, for uh, letting me know. The points have been updated. So, yeah, Foden with that 15-pointer. That's the only change you can see here. Um, so, yeah, I'm on 63 points for the week. A small green arrow to 331k, but benching Ariel and Gordon was quite frustrating, I'm not going to lie. It was between Tony and Gordon to bench. I went for the wrong one. I also put Dubravka late on, uh, close to the deadline, and that cost me six points. But it is what it is, and uh, we move on. I uh, Yeah, I just don't like Ariola. Adol puts his team. Uh, have one free transfer this week, thinking of a minus eight again. What would you do if you're free hitting in 29? Yeah, um, I think Senesi might have to be a sell. Wait for more updates, of course, but if he is out, I'd sell him. Um, yeah, I think Senesi to Doughty or Kerkes. You can pick any Bournemouth defender, really, like Zabini, but I think I'd make that move. Your midfield is fine, but yeah, Alvarez to Solanke or Morris is what I'd do. I don't think you need to take a minus eight. A minus four is enough. You make a defender transfer, Sinesi's out, and you sell Alvarez to either Solanke or Morris. Yes, Joseph, I think Morris could be an option. Um, if I'm ranking them right now, I think Solanke's number one, assuming he's fit to start both games. In second, I think I put Morris, actually, as the best captaincy option. Then in third, I'd probably go for a Saka. Uh, Son would be up there, same with Watkins. I think that's probably my top five captains at the moment. Sorry, not Solanke, not the same player that should have read Tony. No worries, Tustipaki. Doughty moved to left centre-back when Bell was injured, limiting his attacking potential. True, from open play, his attacking potential is limited, but from set pieces, he's always a threat. Um, but yeah, all these Luton Town defender injuries are... 
just a huge concern, both from a defensive perspective and keeping clean sheets, but also for Doughty's attacking potential. You're right to raise that point. Sam Garner says, I'm not free hitting in 29 and wild cutting in 31. Is it worth going Morris ahead of Solanke or do I go Solanke and a minus four in 29 to get Muniz in? And do I take Haaland, Tony or Watkins out this week? So you're not free hitting in 29. Um, in that case, I would get rid of Haaland. In terms of your first question, um, because you're not free hitting in 29, I think Morris might be the one, especially if Solanke is doubtful for one of the games. Um, so yeah, I think it all depends on some factors that kind of um, that happen. So if Solanke is fit to start both, he's still the best option for game at 28. But to also cover 29, I think for you, it might be best to get Morris and I'd sell Erling Haaland. Uh, no worries, Sam. Um, love the videos and consistent streams. Thank you very much, mate. Anthony Rad says, and by the way, for the Salah plans question, I think I'm in a similar situation than you because I need to free hit Gaming 29, but I want a wild card in Gaming 34. So I think I'll end up sacrificing Salah or Haaland. I think by that point, I'd rather sacrifice Haaland, but yeah, very tricky. Um, football's full of surprises. Who knows what other injuries we get, but yeah, look, if I free hit in 29... I'd probably sell Tony this week and keep Erling Haaland. And that means it's more difficult for me to get Salah and Gemic 30. So I do understand your dilemma. Um, it is tricky, to be fair. It really is. Gordon to Barkley. Yes, I think it's worth it. Will the Liverpool versus Man City be a goal galore kind of fixture or a tight one like 1-1? One, one? Great question. My current prediction is actually 1-1. One, one. Um, and to be fair, I said free no Man City in the uh, deadline stream for the Man United game. Turned out to be 3-1. I was still confident of Man City winning when they went 1-0 down, but yeah, I think 1-1 is my current prediction. And it does depend on Salah coming back. Um, Alisson, I think, is going to be out for a couple of weeks, maybe months. Uh, Twisted Parky puts his team. Is Stupinian out for who? That also plays in 29. Spurs defender, uh, West Ham, Villa, or another for a minus four. Yeah, you've already got Doughty. Um, in order to cover both game weeks, I'm not going to lie, it doesn't look great because West Ham have the best fixture in 28, but in Gimmick 29, I don't see a clean sheet at all. I think for you, for you, uh, I'd probably go for a Spurs defender. I really don't like those defenders that play in 28 and 29. Doughty is the only one I'd recommend because he's got the double in 28 and a decent home fixture in 29, but yeah, I think really you could even consider a Nottingham Forest defender, but I don't think that's a great idea. I'd probably go for the Spurs defender there. Watkins' pen record is crap. It's under 50%. Yeah, it's even lower than I thought, but there is a reason why Douglas Luiz takes them. Sean says, KDB and Gordon to Son and Barkley for a minus four. What do you make of that? Um, yeah, good transfers. No problems with that whatsoever. You might want Gordon back by gimmick 30 or 31, but for the next two gimmicks, it makes sense. Uh, Deadmaster says, which midfielders should I buy Huang for? I'm thinking of Son because of price rise, and if I don't own him, he's going to hurt my rank. It's team dependent as well. So if you do, if you're free hitting in 29, Son becomes less of a priority for you, but he also has a great fixture in 30 against Luton Town at home. Great record against Villa, six goals in eight games. I'd go for Son. Early transfer, Darwin to Solanke. Wait for more updates. Solanke isn't guaranteed to start both games. You know, there's a few kind of hiccups there. He's been suffering from this injury problem since the Spurs game. Just wait, because anything can happen. In the Champions League, we could get injuries. Uh, don't forget, Man City are playing on Tuesday. Uh, I think it is, or is it Wednesday? On Wednesday, they're playing. So just wait a little bit, if possible. Yeah, wait for the Friday press conference, Deadmaster. That's the best thing to do. But if you... Um, well, to the answer to your question is Son. I think you're right about that. But wait for the Friday press conferences, if possible. Yeah, that whistle goal was incredible, but I think Rashford's is my favourite. Watkins has scored four out of nine career penalties. 44% rate. That is awful. Probably doing Walker, Foden, Haaland to Zabini, Son and Morris for a minus eight this week. Thoughts? Looks great, especially if you're not free hitting in 29. Son and Morris cover two gamings very well. And Son has a great fixture in 30 against Luton Town. Good evening. KDB to Bowen. Yes, James, but don't make any early transfers uh, if possible. Who knows? Even Bowen could get injured. Just I'd wait if possible, but it is a good move. And if you're not free hitting in 29, it's another box ticked by Jared Bowen. Will Bell start? Uh, honestly, I have no idea. I read out the quote by Rob Edwards earlier, 
And he basically said they don't know the full extent of it. Tio Koef says minus eight, Neto, Kerkez, Doughty, and Morris for Haaland, Walker, Estupinian, and Dubravka. Six added fixtures, no free in 29, minus eight in 29 for Son, Madison, and Tony for Solanke, Saka, and Foden. Wildcard in Faye one, and Sal in Faye for captain. Great plan. I'm not going to lie. It's really well thought out. Um, not a huge fan of the minus eights, though. If you don't... So if you have the free hit available, I'd consider using it, to be fair. Um, I'm just trying to think. How many players do you have right now that feature in Blank Gimmick 29? If it's less than five, I think I just free in 29 and avoid the extra minus eight hit. But you do say no free in 29. You're kind of set on that. I'm not sure if it's because you've used it already or you want to save it for later. Overall, though, good plan. I don't have much to complain about. I like that Neto pick especially. I think he's a really good option for the double. I'd go for it. Adil says, I agree with your plans for my team. However, I don't have the funds for only a minus four. Ah, Alvarez and Sanessi to Slanky and another Bournemouth defender or Doughty. Yeah, um, fair enough. Yeah, makes sense. I mean, you could just sell Haaland and bring him back for 30, but it might be a pain to bring him back. And honestly, by that point, you probably want Salah. So maybe in your case, it's best to sell Haaland, but not ideal this week. Haaland to Morris and Foden to Burn for a minus four, says Adit. Not free hitting in 29 and don't have many players yet. Yep, yeah, great transfers. I'm liking the Morris shouts from a lot of people. Really good stuff. And Jerry Bowen with a plum fixture against Burnley. Good stuff. Don't want to sell Foden. I have Gordon, but he has nice fixtures coming up, so don't want to sell him too. Might just have to sell Foden onto our wildcard. Yeah, you have to make a sacrifice at some point. You can't have the kind of optimal team and, um, you know, have everything perfect. Something has to be sacrificed. Uh, thank you, Dryhill. Massively appreciate it. I'm not sure how far away we are. We are 12 likes away from 100. Let's be sure to smash that record or goal, let's say. Maybe not record. We've definitely hit more in the past. But we can definitely get to 100 before the end of the stream. Be sure to do so. It costs nothing. And we've answered multiple questions today, as always. Uh, Tio says, or Dale, says, just to be correct with the above comment, this will give me five doublers in 28, full 11 and 29. Already have Watkins, Bowen, kept in and instead... Okay, the only thing I'll say, Dale, is you don't need to take a minus 8 in 29 to get a full 11. If you just take a minus 4 and you get to 10, that's enough, to be honest. You don't need to take a minus 8 in 29. That's the only thing I'll say about your plans. But overall, great transfers. I'd go with go ahead with most of them. And a decent strategy to get Salon 30 and to wildcard in 31. Uh, Som Gesso says, hi, Dylan. Who should I bring in for Foden, Bowen or Som? Son for me. I do like Bowen, especially this week. And he's actually a captaincy contender, to be honest, but I'd rather go for Son. Tavernier or Barkley, says Gareth. I'd rather go for Barkley, especially if you're not free hitting in 29. He covers two game weeks in a really good way. Estupinian and Huang to Doughty and Madison would only have Doughty and Solanke as doublers. Yeah, to be honest, you don't need to have four, five, six to, you know, so if you only got Doughty and, um, you know what, Solanke, that's absolutely fine. Madison's a good option for 29, even in gimmick 30. So overall, I'm not really too fussed about that. Took out Foden for Son. It will pay off in the long term, but yeah, selling Foden this week is always going to be a difficult one with that fixture. Um, I do feel for you, but yeah, it, it's Phil Foden, isn't it? Real Madrid got robbed last night. It's kind of weird to say that. It's normally the other way around, but it happens to every team, it seems. Even Barcelona both for and against, mainly uh, for them. But look, it is what it is. Um, I think every team, historically, they've had one call go for them. Uh, do you have time to check my team? Uh, okay, I'll try to do that. Let me just copy your team ID. Um, so I'm going to show some different screens first, which I haven't done yet. Um, and we'll be wrapping up fairly soon. But um, yeah, let's go through some different stats and see how things are looking. So in terms of the FDR, Bournemouth are top. West Ham, Nottingham Forest, Burnley and Brentford are in the top five. If we look at the bottom five, though, it's Everton, Man United, Brighton, Sheffield United, and Crystal Palace. If we look at look at predicted points for game week 28, Neto is top. A goalkeeper top. Uh, Tavernier second. Morris, Woodrow, Semenyo, Smith, Zabani, Barkley, Senesi, Haaland, all in the top 10. I think this will be up there, though, uh, based on Solanke's fitness. He will then rise to the top. If we then look at projected price rises and falls, Son, Douglas Suiz and Doughty all set to go up in price tonight. And Joao Pedro and Adebayo are 
possibly going down. If we look at Draft Pound, they're recommending Morris in for Tony. And to be honest, that could be the best call for me in terms of navigating Blank Gimmick 29 and saving the free hit. And if we look at a poll I put out earlier, with only five players who feature in Blank Gimmick 29, which setup do you prefer? So the first option is Hallam to Solanke, and that means taking more hits. The second option is Tony to Solanke and free hitting in 29. And 63% have gone for the Tony to Solanke option and free hitting in Gimmick 29. If we now look at the top capacity options in Gimmick 27, in the top 10k, over 80% of people went for Erling Haaland. Saka in second with 13%. I thought it would have been a bit closer than that. Watkins third, Son fourth, and Foden fifth. So returns for all of the top five captaincy options so far. All eyes are on Bakayo Saka tomorrow night against Sheffield United. And if we now look at live FPL, no, FPL.team and visualize a potential set of transfers for my squad, Solanke, Barkley, and Doughty could come in. And those making way would be, was it Lascelles? I think the other one would be, well, Erling Haaland. And the number three, I'm kind of forgetting my own team, Anthony Gordon. Um, I'm not going to lie. I don't think I'm going to go for this strategy. This would be the no free hit in 29. Then I'd take another minus four. You can ignore Richarlison. Obviously, he's a doubt there for match, match day uh, 29. So it'd be Madison instead. Um, so Bowen and Madison could come in for gimmick 29. And I'd take a minus eight in gimmick 28. I'm not a big fan of that. But one thing that could help me is instead of going for Solanke, I could go for a triple up in Luton Town. Ugh. Um, and of course, a lot does depend on any updates we get on Solanke and his injury. But if we go here and put Morris, that could be quite decent. Although there's a massive difference in terms of expected points between Morris and Solanke for Gimmick 28, according to FPL.team. But that would give me 10 players, but at the expense of a minus 12 hit across Gimmick 28 and 29. So that's something to think about. Let's now put FPL.team again. Um, let me just get this up and we'll put the team ID here and um, yeah, cover someone's team live. So you've already got a few doublers, mate. That looks pretty good. Looks good. Uh, so we'll talk about this now and see what other questions and comments we have. Um, so yeah, this is from Sam Garner. All right, so let's go for your team. Doughty comes in for Alex Moreno. Um, yeah, so looking at your squad. The weakest part is the defense in terms of that third defender slot. So Gabriel Doughty, absolutely fine. But what I would do um, is sell one of Taylor, Moreno or Bradley, depending on whether you're free hitting in 29 or not. And I would go to a Bournemouth defender. Um, I think the best thing to do is probably sell Bradley. So we'll go to Kirkes. It could be Zabini. Up to you. I don't think there's anything in it, to be honest. Uh, just luck really involved. So Ariola in for Dubravka, Kirkes coming in. That's one free transfer. You could also bring in Solanke if he's fit. Um, but ultimately, let's see your team in 29 as well. That's why I want to check. So you would have an okay number, to be fair. It's not too bad. Um, better than mine, that's for sure. So Tony coming in. We go for Taylor. So you've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight players for gimmick 29. I think it's probably best then. Yeah, I'd go for a Bournemouth defender in Kirkes, so you don't have to play Moreno against Tottenham, uh, Taylor against West Ham, or Bradley against Man City. And I'd also buy Morris or Solanke for Erling Haaland. I think that's what I'd do. So, yeah, that is the two transfers I'd recommend. Kirkes and one of Solanke or Morris for Erling Haaland and saving the free hit for later in the season. Let me know what you think there, Sam, but I think that's the best course of action for the next two game weeks. But then there's a big elephant in the room and that's called Kevin De Bruyne. Oh dear. Um, what do you do with him? <laughs> you could start Ivan Tony instead. I mean, it's not ideal, is it? But who knows? Kevin De Bruyne, big game Kev. He can do something against Liverpool, but he was really off it today. So yeah, that's the only concern, uh, the De Bruyne thing, but overall, Solanke and Kirkes looks really good. And if Solanke's a doubt still for Gimmick 28, I'd go for Morris. And that also helps you for blank Gimmick 29. So let me know your thoughts there, Sam. Uh, we'll go back to my team now. And uh, we're going to be wrapping up, of course. Foden was playing like Prime Messi. I wouldn't go that far, but he played very well. Nice feints here and there. Um, and yeah, even before his goals, he just looked on it. 
He was making some good tackles as well. Should I go for Madison or Bowen? I said last week I would have gone for Madison with the Crystal Palace game in mind. Um, this week, if I'm buying one, it's Bowen because it's Burnley at home, whilst Madison's facing Villa. Um, in Gimmick 29, I do prefer Madison, and in Gimmick 30, but for this week specifically, it's Bowen. So it ultimately depends when you're wildcarding, how long do you want these players for. They're both good options. It's very close to separate them, but I do prefer Bowen for this week. Adol says, yeah, the issue of selling Haaland instead would be that I would be stuck with Alvarez and I'd lose around 0 0.5 million that I made on Haaland now, I think. Do you think a minus eight could be acceptable? Yes, it could be acceptable, but look, um, yeah, I'd rather have Haaland than Alvarez at Anfield, but it is what it is and you could always buy Haaland back anyway. Who would you sell for Son this week, Foden or Gordon? Um, Gordon has a better fixture in 30. And this week, I mean, they both have bad fixtures, so to speak, but Gordon's is more appealing. His record away from home isn't great. I think I'd rather sell Gordon, and that's what I'm looking to do right now, potentially, if I make a midfielder transfer. Senesi, Foden, and Alvarez out, or Senesi, Haaland, and Alvarez out. Difference would be Barkley or Morris. Um, I'd rather go for Morris. So whichever option entails going for Morris, I'd rather go for that. Uh, Ron 4K says, Saka, Bowen, Son, Palmer, Foden, bench one. Inclining towards Foden. Yeah, <laughs> I'd probably bench Foden from those, reluctantly. Twisted Park, he says, maybe uh, should keep a Stupinian then and take hits in midfield forward line for 29. Yeah, true. I mean, it's not like many defenders are great at the moment, but Stupinian is just pretty useless right now. He's been awful, FPL-wise. Um, and if you look at my squad, for example, by far the weakest part of my team is the defence. If it prevents me from taking another minus four, could Morris be better than Solanke to captain in 28? Yes. And if Solanke's a doubt for even one of the games, I'd probably go for Morris in that case. And wildcarding in 31, free in 34, so Sam? Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Uh, no worries, Sam. Good luck to you as well. Uh, Twisted Parky, I'll try to go for your team very soon. So I'll keep that in mind. Uh, but that's the last team I'm going to go for. Otherwise, it's going to be... Uh, just, you know, this stream will never end. We're going to go for every single team. So I'll go through Twisted Parky's team very soon and uh, answer the remaining questions too. Hesham says, my midfield is Foden, Saka, Palmer, Douglas Luiz, Son. I want to bring in Bowen. Who should I sell? Saving free hit in 29. In that case, you probably sell Foden. Yeah, I'd sell Foden there. I will free hit in 34, wildcard in 35, and bench boost in 37. Good plan. I like the look of it. Um... My current plan is the wildcard in 31, and the free hit will be deployed in either 34 or 29. I'm more likely to use it in 29, but things could certainly change. Solanke being injured could actually prevent me from using the free hit in 29. Rank-wise, at least, says Miguel. Um, okay, so first, let's go for the first question. I seem to keep shooting myself in the foot. My defense of Mikalenko, Moreno, Reggion, Doughty, and Senesi isn't ideal against people, either Arsenal defense. Playing for strategy isn't seeming to help me. Well, we've got the double coming up. The Senesi one's very unlucky. Doughty did get a decent five-pointer this week. Uh, Reguilon, look, he got the assist. He actually looked very encouraging against Chelsea. I think he could be a great option for 29. But yeah, so far, not so good. But I think over the next two, that's the make or break for you there, Miguel. Rank-wise, at least. But thanks for your streams. They are very helpful. I appreciate that, Miguel. Hopefully, those picks do pay off and your strategy ends up paying dividends. Do you think Salah will be back for 28? Yes, but to be honest, I thought he'd be back for Nottingham Forest. I was wrong. The Carabao Cup final, I was wrong. But I think they do everything possible to have him back for Manchester City. Would you bench Palmer, Foden, Haaland or Watkins this week? I would bench Foden. Do you think it would only be good to bring into FPL that you can only captain one player a maximum amount of times, like 10 players? Sorry, like 10 or 18? Yeah, I think um, you mentioned this before, or someone else did, but it's a good idea. I think it could work. Um, a few years ago in F1 Fantasy, you couldn't captain an asset over a certain price. So you couldn't captain Verstappen, Lewis Hamilton, when they were fighting each other for the title. That could also be another idea. Uh, but I, to be honest, I'd still rather have it be open. And it's not like Haaland is destroying everyone like he probably should have done in recent weeks, because he's missed so many big chances. Sell Gordon or Foden if you're free hitting in 29. Um, if you're free hitting in 29 and have Haaland. I'd still sell Gordon. I mean, the thing is, in Gemic 30, Gordon has a better fixture. And in Gemic 31. So from that perspective, I'd rather sell Foden. 
Zubin, I mean, I've already done UCL Fantasy videos. I uploaded a Limitless video today, uh, which was recorded a few days ago, but yeah, it's just the way I had to do it. Um, and also I recorded and uploaded the best wildcard team video. Those are already out on the channel. The team selection is available for channel members and patrons already, and it will be published tomorrow. I wanted to do it a bit later, so maybe record it now or um, on Monday, but I literally don't have the time, so I had to make a compromise there. So yeah, you see your fantasy content will always be up on the channel. Even when I'm on holiday, that is always the aim. Thank you, Sean, as always. I appreciate it, and good luck to you. Adebayo or Morris? Uh, Morris. Adebayo might be mi um, Minage? I can't even speak. He might be managed because he's just coming back from an injury. Morris is in great form. I'd rather go for Morris, to be honest. Um, and if you're asking me right now, I don't think Adebayo starts both games in Game Week 28. But let's wait and see. Hopefully there is positive news on that front. Thank you to those that liked the video. Let's try to get this 150, even for those that are watching it later on, retrospectively. Um, and yeah, the last thing I want to go through is FPL.team. So let's go back to that website and visualize Twisted Parky's team, a channel member here. Uh, thank you very much, Twisted Parky. So, uh, breaking down your team, let's put Doughty in for Trippier. I mean, you've got Gabriel and Doughty, that looks fine. Um, I'd start Ariola this week. Palmer, Saka, Son, Foden, good midfield. Solanke, Tony, Haaland. Uh, so, Twisted Parky, let me know, are you free hitting in 29? Um, because you've got Ariola and Leno. You've also got Reguillon. So you've got three, four, five starters in Gemic 29, and you've also got Leno there on the bench. So let me know. That will also determine my advice. Um, thank you, Twister Parky. Massively appreciate. No worries, Zubin. Um, to be honest, a lot of people watch it later. Um, so when I upload it on a Friday or Saturday, sometimes even earlier, it will tend to get most of the views on the Monday and Tuesday, uh, which is kind of normal. So don't worry about that. Uh, I do. I mean, I'll probably talk about this in the team selection, to be honest. But in terms of chip strategy, wildcard 31, probably free in 29, if not 34, and bench boost 37. But I'm open and flexible about it. Eduardinho, always a pleasure. I have Trippier, Trent, Borro, and Senesi. Defensive injury problems. That's just unlucky. I mean, what can I say? Borro should be back next week, but it's Aston Villa away. Trent is probably out for the Man City game. Let's obviously keep an eye out for updates, though. Trippier, obviously a big blow. Very unlucky. It would have been a clean sheet for you and potentially bonus points. And Senesi, I mean, what more can we say? Very unlucky there, Eduardinho. Hopefully you can sort out that defence um, later on. Bowen is in that team, not Huang Yu Chan, uh, says Twisted Parky. Don't know why it's not showing up. Wait, did you make the Bowen transfer now, Twisted Parky? If you made it after the Gimmick 27 deadline, then I won't be able to see it until the next deadline. That's the way it works. Uh, what was the other question? Just if you're free hitting, if you're planning on free hitting in 29, or if you're looking to save it. Can you show your team and potential transfers 28? I'll leave that for the um for the uh, team selection video. The reaction stream, I always show my points total, how I did in game week 27, or basically the previous game week. Um, I leave all of the upcoming stuff for future videos. Uh, but um, if you see my recent ones, you will probably have a good idea of what I want to do. Uh, buy one of Solanke or Morris for either Haaland or Tony. And I'd also be looking at buying a defender, probably Kirkes or Zabini. Any tips? Uh, like I said, Ben, um, Twisted Park is like the last uh, team I'm going to go through. Uh, apologies for that. But if you do put your team ID on the comment section, Twitter, Instagram, the Discord server, I'll be happy to help. Uh, what would make you free at 29? Look, I'm not a big fan of free hitting in 29, but... If I want to get to seven, eight players and most importantly cover the best options for that free hit for that blank game week, I need to take massive hits. And um, that's the main problem. Uh, like I said, 24K will. Uh, Twisted Parky's team is the last one I'm going to go through. Um, and I did mention that before I even went for it. Um, if you do put your team in the comment section though and stuff like that, I'd be happy to help. Trying to avoid free hit 29. But Richarlison, etc. have become injured. Fair enough. I'll make a minus four this week and next. Okay, so... Um, in that case, I think Morris could be the one to buy them. So I would do Haaland out for Morris. That covers two birds with one stone. Um, so yeah, let's put them here. We'll put Solanke captain for now. We'll put Morris vice, potentially. Um, and then, of course, that would give you another player in Gamic 29. I'm guessing by that stage you'd probably want Bowen. You could even buy this week for Phil Foden. Um, so one thing I'd 
potentially consider for you, which is ridiculous, but maybe Barkley in for Foden this week. But you could even go for Bowen at home to Burnley. You really could. Um, yeah, bench Reggie on trip here. So, oh, you already have Bowen, didn't you? You said you have Bowen. Okay. Um, so Bowen comes in for... You're not going to bench him yet. Bench Tony. I think that looks pretty good, actually. Um, so just let me know. Would Bowen basically mean you take a minus eight, or do you already have Bowen, uh, Twisted Parky? Let me know. You did it on Saturday night. Oh, you, you did it on Saturday night. So these transfers would incur a minus eight hit. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, it does seem excessive, to be honest, to take a minus eight hit. And it's up to you whether you think Barkley does well enough to outscore Foden by four points or more. Um, but ultimately, he does feature in 29 as well. So it's still looking pretty good. And then if we look at Gimmick 29, yeah, it's looking quite decent. Then you can basically take another minus four hit, as you mentioned. Um, so yeah, you've got Ivan Tony there. It's looking really good, actually, your Gimmick 29 team. So then I'd probably bring in Madison and potentially an Aston Villa defender, uh, sorry, midfielder. So one of Bailey or Douglas Louise. And I think that's pretty much it. Even a Langer or Gibbs White could be a nice differential. So let's put Gibbs White now for the sake of it. But that looks pretty good. Yeah, so it is a lot. Minus 8 and a minus 12. You could consider um, not going for Barkley yet. And instead just trimming it down to a minus 4 this week and a minus 4 next week. But overall, very solid plan. And I think it will pay off, even if you do end up taking a minus 12 hit over both game weeks. Let me know your thoughts there, mate. Um, I'm not saying Gibbs White is the one to definitely get, but it is something worth considering. Um, yeah, already have Bowen. Yeah, I understand that. It's just if you made that move on Saturday night, then if you also bring in Barkley and Morris, that would be a minus eight because you made it on Saturday night after the deadline. So it would be a gimmick 28 transfer. Uh, welcome, Callum Jr., uh, finally, a nice green arrow this week. Plans are turning to Solanke, Leno to Neto. Only dilemma is keeping a Stupinian or taking a minus four to someone. I'd probably take a hit to get rid of him. But having said that, defenders have been quite poor this season, especially in recent weeks. And unless you're going for doublers or those that feature in Gimmick 29, it's difficult to justify hits for defenders in general, um, in my opinion. No worries, Mr. Parkey. Let me know what you think. Would you be prepared to take that minus eight and then a minus four? Let me know. Geotip says Haaland to Solanke or Foden to Barkley. Um, Haaland to Solanke. But wait for more updates on Solanke. You never know what could happen. Yeah, 24k. Well, I do apologize. <laughs> Can you choose my protein flavor? Um, Vimto or orange mango? Um, I'll go for mango. But look, it's up to you, mate. I mean, maybe you prefer orange. Who knows? I just go for mango personally. Uh, yeah, Wei saying, put your team ID in the Discord server or on Twitter, Instagram, in the YouTube comment section, and I'll go for it. Um, I might buy Doughty plus Barkley, Tavernier minus four, or not taking hit. Uh, on paper, my favourites will be Doughty and Barkley. It covers two game mix there, and I'm not a massive fan of Tavernier. The only saving grace is that the two home fixtures are really good. Sheffield United and Luton, and that's where a Tavernier or Cloyvert could do well, but I don't trust them, really. Might do the minus four this week, Morris maybe, but scared to remove Haaland. Liverpool, so many injuries, and... Um, definitely the minus four next week. Fair enough. I completely understand that. I'm also apprehensive about selling Haaland this week. Um, and that's why I may end up uh, selling Tony instead and free hitting in 29. That's not locked in for me, but I will talk about this in the team selection video later on. You know what? I'll. This is the problem though. If I keep going through teams and stuff and the team IDs, you know, more and pe more people are going to ask for it, but I'll try to go through Ben's team. He was a channel member very recently. Um, and also I'll go through Wasings, but that's it. After that, no more teams. So don't put any more team IDs. If you want me to give any advice and provide any feedback, leave it in the comment section and I can go for it. But um, yeah, otherwise the stream will never end if we keep going through more teams. But let's actually go through this. Um, let's bring this up. So now let's go through... Um, let's see. This is... And if 24K will still in the chat, of course, since he did ask... But other than that, don't put any more team IDs um, unless you're doing in the comment section. Um, so this would be Ben's team. And Ian says, thanks for your streams, Dylan. Would you do KDB to Son for a minus four, three and 29, but want Son for Gimmick 30? Yes, I would do it. 
it's still worth it. Aston Villa is a good fixture for Son. Six goals and one assist in eight games against the Villains. And he's facing Luton Town at home in 30. So I'd definitely do it. Uh, ben, let's go for your team now. So you've got Bell, who is an injury doubt right now. So that is a shame. Um, okay, so what I would do here... Uh, and for anyone who does put their team ideas, so Ben and um, it was Wayseng, let me know if you're free hitting in 29. That does play a big part because... If you aren't free hitting in 29, I think Hallen to Morris is a great transfer to make over the next two game weeks. So assuming you are, um, you're not free hitting, I'd put Morris in for Haaland. I think your defence is looking quite poor, especially if Bell is injured. So I would get rid of probably Aki or Stupinian. It's up to you, really. Um, I'd get rid of one of them and go to a Bournemouth defender. You could even go for Doughty, to be fair purely for the attacking potential and featuring in 29. If we actually look at your team for 29, um, yeah, you've got the Burnley defender here, although I don't really expect them to do anything. Um, Ariola, Bell, Doughty, Son, Douglas, Louise, Watkins, Morris. Yeah, I think with these transfers, it would make sense to save the free hit. Um, and then you could do Solanke to Tony in Gemic 29. And you could also bring in, I'd say, Jared Bowen or... Even Mbuma, if he's fit by then, could be a great option. A, uh, Nottingham Forest midfielder, Morgan Gibbs White or Elanga. Also Madison. Uh, so any of these options look good. You could do something like that for a minus four hit. And you've got a decent number of players. It's not ideal though. And Bell might even be out for Gimmick 29, although I don't think that'll be the case. And then yeah, in Gimmick 28, it's not looking too bad. But yeah, even with this minus four in Gimmick 28, you've got Bell there and he's a big injury doubt. Um, but overall... This wouldn't look too bad, actually. Um, it's just a minus four each week. You could even take a minus eight, but that all depends, I think, on Bell. Let me know what you think, uh, Ben. Maybe you like it, maybe you don't. I've used my free hit. So yeah, in that case, these are some transfers I would suggest there. Um, yeah, Ben, uh, don't worry. I, I put your team on screen. So yeah, let me know what you think of these plans. Uh, Ron 4K says, man, I really don't want to make early transfers, but if I get Doughty and Morris today... I have 0 0.2 million left after I get Haaland and 31. If I let them rise, then I'll have 0 million left. I get that. Um, and look, if you sell Haaland, you won't be able to afford him back for 30, maybe even for 31, unless you make other transfers. So there's pros and cons for it. But in that scenario, you could go for it, but there's always a risk, mate. There always is. There's Champions League matches this week, European football. Injuries can happen in training. You know how football is, but... If you have to, you're set on Morrison Doughty, you're not free hitting in 29, go for it then. But it's not ideal. It really isn't. Um, let's see the other one. Um, I think it was Wei Seng. I'll go through that very quickly as well. I might bad Doughty plus Barkley to have an in minus four, not taking hit. Um, so let's go through that team as well. Uh, let's see how I can do this. All right. Just in case, I'll leave this on. But yeah, Ben, I have gone through your team. So let me know. Um, and let's put this team ID here. All right, so this is Wasting. Okay, it says I can't plan. What? Why can't I go for your team? Okay, yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. The um, the, yeah, the uh, the internet actually dropped um for the first time in a very long while. That was a bit frustrating. Um, yeah, what? I can't even. I can't even load FPL right now. Uh, I can't even load FPL dot team. Uh, let me know. If the stream is still going on, by the way, I'm not sure what just happened. Um, and the FPL.team website isn't loading. Uh, so Wei saying just leave it in the um, in the live chat. Just leave it in the live chat. I'll go for another time. It's probably a sign that I should wrap things up. Um, so yeah, leave it in the comment section and Discord server, and I'll try to give you a second opinion. Or you could just put a picture up as well. Uh, no worries to the parky. Between this week and the next, I'll be sending a gift or a membership. You don't have to, mate. Um, it's already appreciated. If I get stuck, I might message on the Discord. Really appreciate your thoughts. Yeah, do that. Um, we can talk about that even more. Thank you, Ian. Have a good evening. Um, yeah, uh, let's keep on pushing away. As Twister Parky says, get more likes as well. Joel says, bring in a second Luton defender for the next two game weeks or bring in Bournemouth defender and then a minus four for Reggio next week. I'd rather go for the Bournemouth defender, to be honest. The only Luton Town defensive coverage I'd want is Doughty, and that's about it. Uh, I'll free in 29 says way saying, fair enough. Yeah, like I said, Callum, I can't take any more. And even now, uh, yeah, even my internet is going and stuff like that. Uh, no worries, Ben. Do I wildcard in 31? My plan is to get in players for 29 and then wildcard 30, 31. Yeah, I think for your team, it's probably best to wildcard in 31. 
yeah, that is probably the best way to go about it. You could save it for 35, but yeah, between 30 and 31, I'd opt for the latter. Twisted Park 6 says, if I go for another forward in 29, would you get Watkins or Muniz? Uh, I'm sorry, I, I'd, I'd still go for Watkins. I know Muniz has been in great form, but yeah, I'd go for him. And should I say my triple captain for 34 or 37? Um, if Solanke's fit and you know he's able to start both games, I triple captain him this week, but there is a risk. Um, you will have opportunities in 34. It could be Hoyland with two home games against Sheffield United and Newcastle. Um, Saka could have a double. Well, he, he will have a double. It's just a matter of when. Um, Haaland and Salah. Son. Palmer will have two doubles, I think. So, yeah, there are definitely some alternatives. But at the moment, I would lean towards triple captaining Solanke. Uh, thank you to Stupaki. Um, I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. Yeah, I don't like the double Luton Town defense. Um, look, what I'm showing on screen is because this guy has... Um, he's looking to free hit, to not free in 29. And Doughty enables you to do it. And Bell is injured. He might need to get rid of Bell as part of a minus... Uh, eight in game of 28 so yeah um, that's why of course it's not that clear if you were to get rid of bell you'd probably get rid of him for kirkes or zabini but yeah we've covered plenty of teams today and plenty of questions and uh yeah pretty much everything you need to know for game of 28 and our initial reactions to it thank you ben have a good one as well yuki says hi dylan is Halland to solanke minus four worth it yes but wait for more updates solanke you know, he's had these injury problems since the Spurs game. Don't make early transfers, but if he's ready to start both games, it's worth a minus four hit for sure. Um, he doesn't feature in 29, of course, but he faces Everton at home in game 30, whilst Haaland plays Arsenal. So I would argue that over the next three game weeks, I think Solanke outscores Haaland potentially by four points or more. I think he does, but that is assuming that Solanke does start both games in double game 28. Thank you to those that have been watching. If you enjoyed it or found it useful, then be sure to smash the like button and subscribe for new. Let's get this video to over 150 likes and let's keep on pushing towards 23k subscribers and beyond. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, DylanRCM for the latest FPL and UCL fantasy updates. And also you can become a channel member or patron for early access to my videos. And if you are a channel member or patron watching, you can watch the team selection for match day eight in UCL Fantasy right now. I uploaded it earlier and it will be published for everyone tomorrow. So keep an eye out for that. There's also the FPL League, the Discord server and the Draft Town. Check that out. It's a great resource I've been using since the summer. And as always, it's been a pleasure talking to all of you. Thank you to Stupaki. Get a rest, Dylan. Hard work for you this one. Thanks for helping us all. No worries, mate. Thank you very much. Thank you, Adil. Uh, Kathdan says, Hallen to Morris for a minus four. Yes, especially if you're not free hitting in 29. Morris ticks off two boxes there with a blank and a double in 28. I think Morris is a good option this week. I'll see you all very soon. If you have any more questions or comments, leave them in the comment section down below or on Twitter, Instagram, Discord server, as I mentioned before. I hope you enjoy the football. Let's see what happens tomorrow between Sheffield United and Arsenal. And I'll see you very soon for the UCL Fantasy deadline stream.